Right now, though, we have followed Michelle Heaton on this show over the years to raise awareness. She has bravely shared her experiences of having a hysterectomy and a double mastectomy. And she's hoping to help others again this morning, talking with her husband, Hugh, for the first time about how her alcohol addiction impacted their family. Well, Michelle joins me now. That's so emotional. I know watching that for you yeah. is so emotional. How are you? How are you feeling? I am great now. Good. Good. Um, I'm really um, um, I promised myself I wouldn't cry, but it's okay. You know, worry. I love my husband so much. And mm -hmm. just off the back of that, I wanted to say sorry to you before we begin, because there were times where I drank before I sat on the sofa. Oh, love. And you trusted me, and I did campaigns for you. Oh, Michelle. And, and I love you so much, because you've always been there to support me. And I want to say I'm sorry. Don't be daft. You don't have to apologise to me or to anybody else. You, you have done... The, 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 the easy path to have taken for you was to keep drinking. Yes. The hard thing was to say, no, I'm not going to do this anymore. I've got an amazing husband and family and friends. And that takes real guts. And you're one of the strongest women that I know. I mean, we followed you when you've had all of those health problems. You have to have a double mastectomy, a hysterectomy, all these things that you've gone through. And you're still standing. Yes, so you're still out. you're Summer. still here. You yeah. are, but it's been hard, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I suppose I was in trouble with addictions many years ago. It got worse over lockdown. Um, it, I was able to hide it because of lockdown, I suppose. Yeah. Um, manipulate it. Nobody. We went interacting with people, so ultimately it became a party for one. It right. became self-sabotage on myself. And at some point over the last year and a half, I lost complete control and I was completely powerless to alcohol. I don't know when or how it happened, but at some point it did. Right. And I couldn't, I couldn't breathe without drinking. I couldn't get out of bed. I was, I was physically sick. I was physically on the way to unfortunately dying. My right. liver was packing in. My pancreas doesn't work anymore. Um, I've lost a bit of weight and it's not intentional. It's just that my body's trying to relearn and relive in this new body. Okay. It's like being reborn almost because I can feel every emotion, which is great, but I would drink on every emotion. So I'm having to learn coping mechanisms to deal with everything from fear, hate, um, love, compassion, calmness and serenity, which I'm filled with now. Yeah. And that's good, Yeah. but I'm like, is is this good? It's good. And I have to accept that it's OK right. to feel serene because I've never known it. I was always in chaos. Gosh, that's extraordinary because you hid that so well from the rest of the world. Yeah. You know, anybody that would be following you on Instagram or whatever, you see this amazing, strong, beautiful woman. You know, there you are working out, there you are on holiday, there you are living your life with your yeah. gorgeous husband and your beautiful children. And inside, as you said, it was chaos and it... Yeah, nothing was right. Nothing was functioning. No, I, I, I um, gosh, I remember back. And um, we've talked about this on the show. Um, my addiction with cinnamon pills back in the day when I was very young and I had heart problems because of it. Looking back, I've always had addictions in my life, and now I could recognise that. I mean, I never put the two together before, you know, going to rehab. Um, but it was evident when I was talking more thoroughly with the therapists and in group sessions that actually this goes back way back. Mm. And whatever I've been searching for, more acceptance, I suppose. Um, never thought that I'm good enough, um, that I'm here by fluke, mm. that when I went through the hysterectomy in particular, I lost my right on paper of being a woman, having kids again. Yep. Don't worry, Faith, she's over there. I'm, I don't want any more. You're just enough, darling. No, your daughter's yes, here, actually. And this is. is an interesting thing because you, she's, she's only nine, yeah. but she knows what's going on. She knows what's going on. You've talked about it with her. You've got, I have to say, you've got the most amazing husband. He's extraordinary. I know. Extraordinary. But the children, the children have had to grow up quite fast because of this. Yeah. You've been very honest about it as well. Yep, I have to be. Um, I think that's really important that if my kids ask me a direct question about anything, I'm able to give them an answer because you know the nature of the beast being in this industry that they're able to find out anything that they want and that's true you know kids talk at school yes i could not be prouder of my faith right. she's over there and i'm so proud of you she's just such a wonderful young woman 
and she's took a lot on board. She had to grow up really quickly because of mummy. You know, I put her through so much pain and, and the fam, you know, all the family. Um, but I couldn't be prouder and, I, and I'm pretty sure I got it just in time before it was too late because these things can damage families. It's not just the addict, it's the family around them. It's really crucial that anybody watching this, if you're a family member looking at the addict or the addicts looking at this, there is hope, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Um, just don't leave it too late, just ask for help. Do what I did, acknowledge that you are powerless. That's mm. the hardest step, the first step for survival. Exactly, and sometimes it has to get so bad. Yes. For you to do something about it. Yeah, right? it you does. had to. What was the what was the thing though? What was it that just was it was it you and the, and the kids or what was it you thought to yourself? I actually have to do something about this. Well, about two years ago, um, and I've never spoke about this. Hugh staged an intervention. I was really, really ill two years ago, but I liked being an addict. Mm. It sounds really warped and disturbed, but that's the truth of the matter. Mm. I was, I enjoyed the chaos. I didn't want to admit that I needed help and I wasn't ready. So I convinced him that I was fine. And then because it was drawn to my attention that people were aware of it, I then became a master of disguising it, manipulating, lying, hiding, effectively getting worse. Mm. And um, I think last September I was in hospital with pancreatic failure and my liver, um, was was about to kick in. I proved that I could get better mm -hmm. because the blood tests after that came slightly better and then I used that as an excuse to get worse. And I knew that this time round, about a week before I went to the Priory, I was on death's door. Something sure. just told me that the, I'm, gonna, I'm going to die. I'm going to not wake up. And I remember crying, wishing I didn't, which oh, is really hard. Shame. But then somebody offered me a lifeline and suggested the Priory and I was ready. You have to be ready to accept it. Of course you do. Of course you do. And have, extra, like we said about your husband, he's, he is remarkable. I do love him. He's a gorgeous, gorgeous man. He has got a wee message for you. He, wanted, he really wanted to show you this. And I think this is lovely. Have a look. Hi, baby. Just want to say how proud me and the kids are of, of you and how well you're doing on this journey. I know it hasn't been easy, but you're inspiring us every day and we love having you back in our lives. <laughs> there you are. There you are. That just says it all, doesn't it? Does. It? It, it does. Really and does. he loves you too and he says hello. He's gorgeous. So look, how are you? You're feeling strong. Yes. You're feeling good. Yes. You're going to be going to be back with the girls from Liberty X. You're going yes. to be doing things. That you, so you couldn't have done that before, but now no. things are looking good. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've had five gigs over the summer already. We've got more coming up. Fantastic. And it's such a pleasure. It's so good being on stage sober. I mean, if I'd known this years ago, I would have stopped drinking years ago. It's so much better and invigorating being on that stage and not worrying whether you're going to fall over and just absorbing it all. I've never done a gig sober before and it's so much better. Honestly, <laughs> I'm loving life. I'm stronger, I'm fitter, I'm healthier. I can take in everything around me. I can smell and taste. It's just, it, they say in the programme, in AA, it's a life beyond your wildest dreams. Wow. And it's not about wealth, it's about health and mindset. And I really have got that now. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Thank you for coming in today. And good luck with whatever, whatever you do in the future, because the future is bright for yes. you. Oh, thank you, Michelle. Thank, thank you, you so, so much, much, my love. Darling. It's great to see you. Okay. Great to see you. And you'll find loads of advice and helplines on our website, of course. Don't forget, you can watch full episodes of Lorraine on the ITV Hub and all the best clips, compilations and playlists right here on our channel. Just subscribe now and you'll never miss an upload. Click here to watch another video similar to this one or click here to head to our channel's homepage to explore all of our exciting videos.